Today we're doing a long-term review and impressions on the DeWalt 735X, both with the factory cutter head and the Shelix helical upgrade. Stick around. So the DeWalt 735 is a really common and popular planer, and what I really like about it is kind of the low squat stance. Among other four post benchtop planers, it actually seems much more sturdy to me, even compared to the DeWalt 733 and 734 that preceded this model. Those are more upright models with cutter head carriage locks, and this model you don't need to lock in the carriage. In fact, there is no cutter head lock. You simply crank the wheel to your desired thickness and go ahead and make your cut. So to me, that's an advantage that you don't have to mess with the cutter head. The only thing you have to watch out for is snipe. And in that regard, you do need these optional in-feed and out-feed tables. Now, if you get this as the 735X, it's the same planer that you would get without the X designation, but it does add the in-feed and out-feed tables and in some packages, an extra set of knives. The factory cutter head uses a three knife system and that's really the weakness of this planer. Uh, they do make good cuts initially, but what you'll find is they dull very, very rapidly. And so you'll quickly be looking for alternatives to the factory three knife cutter head system. Some companies offer knives that replace the existing knives in the three knife cutter head that comes with your planer. And I think those are fine too, but if you do happen to get a nick in those knives, the same situation still exists. You can loosen them, slide them opposite directions, see if you can overlap that nick, but usually in my experience, that doesn't help for long, and within a week or so, you've got those ridges and lines running down the length of your boards. What I found I very quickly had to do with my planer was upgrade it to a Shelix spiral cutter head. And that was a nice upgrade. There were some issues with it, and I'll talk about those in detail, but first I wanna talk about the benefits of that Shelix cutter head upgrade. The main reason that brought me to upgrade to the Shelix was tear out. I was seeing a lot of tear out in Cortison white oak or any figured lumber, particularly if the knives weren't fresh out of the box. So the Shelix has some distinct advantages. The stock cutter head gives you two-sided blades, where the Shelix gives you four-sided cutters, and with the Shelix, they're carbide. Solid carbide cutters, of course, are gonna last much, much longer. I got to the point of absolute frustration. Every time I would go to Lowe's, I'd be picking up a new set of blades for this machine. At the time, they were 55 bucks a pop, and it just seemed like a waste because I would run 100 or 200 board feet through, and I would notice a real perceptible slowing in the feeding and a decrease in the cut quality. More tear out, all the things I was trying to avoid. So for me, that was steering me very quickly towards a Shelix upgrade. It did solve the problem of tear out. So I'm happy I did it in that regard. But as far as other things, other reasons that people upgrade to the Shelix like noise, I think it's kind of a plus minus situation. Yes, the Shelix cutters do cut much more quietly as far as the cutting action when it's under load. But this machine is an absolute screamer even when it's not under load, and that's simply because it uses a 15 amp universal motor. You're just not gonna be able to escape that. If you're using a bench top or a lunchbox planer, you're gonna have serious noise issues. So the way I compare this is if you're running this with the factory three knife cutter head, you're using soft earplugs, and then you're using big earmuffs on top of that. When you switch to the Shelix head, you can get away with just the earmuffs, and that's kind of where it's at. The big 20-inch planer behind me is a different situation. That's got a helical head. It's a Jet 20-inch 208HH. That you almost forget to wear any kind of hearing protection because it's just so quiet. Uh, it's the quality of the sound, and it's the volume of the sound. Uh, and so the Shelix does help in some regard, but don't expect perfection. You're still gonna use good quality hearing protection anytime you're out in the shop. There's a two-speed gearbox on this unit, and that really helps. Um, of course, the cutter head is spinning at 10,000 RPM, and the two speeds gives you an option between 14 and 26 feet per minute compared to the different speeds you might expect to see on a larger industrial planer would be anywhere between 24 and 31 feet per minute. 
Now there's a couple features that you get with this machine that you actually don't get with a larger industrial planer. One is the material removal gauge down underneath. That's a very convenient feature. And also the depth stop. Now when I switched from using this machine every day to using a large 20 inch planer, I really missed that depth stop because you could just dial it in to three quarters, keep cranking away, listening to your music, and you would know when you approach that three quarter inch limit. I have to use a Wixi gauge on my big, big planer and it wasn't equipped like that from the factory. So it was an additional upgrade. A Wixi does make some nice gauges that you can add on to this machine. I have another portable planer with a Wixi readout and it's fantastic. It's quite a bit more accurate than the gauge on this factory scale, but the way this comes with the material removal gauge and the depth stop is a pretty good setup right out of the box. These infeed and outfeed tables are not optional by any means. If you want to avoid snipe at all, you really need to get the infeed and outfeed tables and do set them so that they're a little bit higher at the far infeed and outfeed side. Just about fitting a 20 thousandth inch feeler gauge under a straight edge is where you want to be for the best performance on snipe. No snipe on the infeed side here, but I can see and feel just a little bit of snipe on the trailing edge of the board. Otherwise, the cut quality looks good on difficult quarter sawn oak. The maximum depth of cut in my experience with this machine is about a 32nd of an inch. That's a half a crank on the hand wheel and it's pretty pathetic if you're trying to take thick white oak from say five quarter down to three quarter in some instances. That's a long arduous process. Compare that to a large industrial planer where you can take a 16th inch or more per pass plus you have a faster feed rate it leads to much quicker processing of lumber, but if your budget or your space allowances will confine you to just a portable planer, I think this one is still in the running compared to other models. Now the dust collection is excellent on this machine and it's primarily thanks to the fan assisted chip ejection system. And basically it has an impeller that blows the chips out and assists your dust collector in doing its job. So whether you have a small portable dust collector or a large cyclone system, I think you'll be very, very pleased with the dust collection. You just won't have that problem with chips and debris falling down onto the shop floor. Now there are a couple of quirks with doing a Shelix install on this machine. At the time I installed mine, there was only one option available, an undersized diameter cutter head that would allow you to insert the cutter head into the machine without removing any of the inserts. That's a convenience it seems initially, but when you install that undersized cutter head, then the material removal gauge will be inaccurate. And so you'll have to take off that plate and slot the holes in order to reset that and regain your accuracy on that gauge. They now have two options when upgrading this machine to a Shelix, either a full diameter head that matches the same size as your factory head, or you can go with that undersized helical cutter head. One main limitation of this planer is the 15 amp motor. Because it's trying to plane up to 13 inch wide boards with just a 15 amp universal motor, it's really underpowered for that situation, especially if you're trying to tackle dense hardwoods. So frequently what you'll notice is the thermal overload switch will pop. That's like a breaker that's built into the front of your machine. Once in a blue moon, you might actually pop a breaker in the shop too, but the thermal overload trip is a, a frequent nuisance that'll happen to you. I've replaced my thermal overload. It didn't seem to help. And then when I upgraded to the Shelix, it seemed like it was even more of a problem because it's well known that the helical cutter heads, because there's always one or more cutters in contact with the wood, they do require a little bit more amperage. I do like that the material removal gauge will work anywhere across the width of the planer because that's not true for all models. People always freak out when they realize you can't fully fold up the outfeed table because the dust port is in the way. I don't know if it's that big of a problem. You can solve it with a simple bungee cord. The onboard wrench will give you access to your cutter head for maintenance or blade changes. 
So these three thumb screws, you remove them to pull away the dust shroud. And this dust shroud is actually something that I've broken in the past. If you develop a crack or a hole in that from, oh, a chip or maybe a knot that comes off the board and does some damage, it will actually fill up the interior of your planer with chips. And the symptom that will make you take note of it is it's really hard to crank the machine up and down. I've also broken this fan impeller housing. That wasn't quite as obvious because the crack was down at the bottom and it gave me the same problem. This whole area would fill with chips, it would bind on the chain, and it would make it impossible to raise or lower the machine for height adjustments. For me, the Shelix upgrade did really solve the problem of poor blade life. These carbide inserts seem to go for miles and miles, even when you're planing dense hardwood. And I really like the fact that they're carbide inserts and you have four sharp edges. So if you do develop a nick or they finally do get dull, just loosen the torque screw, rotate it 90 degrees, and you're all set. We'll link up to a video that'll show you the details on how to rotate cutters on this machine. You won't be able to use the original cutter head lock that came with your machine if you decide to do this Shelix upgrade, but that didn't seem to be too big of a deal. The Torx wrench that comes with the Shelix head does a good job and the cutters are still easy to change. I added a little spray foam on the underside of the lid just to cut down on the echoing and noise produced from this planer. It might have helped a little. So how loud is this planer removing a 32nd of an inch of material? Well, let's find out. First noise will be the dust collector coming on. Oh, the children! Cover your ears! I read on an online forum that if you remove the chip ejection fan internally from the planer that it can help reduce the noise, so I tried it. I didn't notice any improvement whatsoever. If anything, it made the noise the planer makes higher pitched and more annoying, so I don't recommend removing the chip ejection fan. Alright guys, there it is. My long term impressions on the DeWalt 735X, both the good and the bad, with and without the Shelix cutter head upgrade. Hopefully a tidbit or two here has helped you along your way as you're looking at your next planer. Thanks for watching. We'll see you on the next one.